I wake again with the wretched cough, my ribs tight, my stomach shuddering. I am drowning in air. I am alive. I am afraid. I tiptoe down the hallway. Father. Dad. He calls. Erica? You okay? What are you doing? Water. I reply, softly, knowing that it is only a half-truth. Nights like this, when I awake, choking, I can never regain that sense of pleasant unconsciousness, that lack of awareness of existence, the painless freedom of sleep. I don't blame him for worrying about me, about what his fourteen-year-old daughter would be doing up late. I know he doesn't worry about the cough anymore. He knows it must be something more. The full truth is that, when I am jarred awake with cough, I experience the most sensational dread, and I weep, quietly. Terrified, yes, but also so very, very sorry. In the three months of this dilemma, doctors have confirmed that Erica Deschain is physically healthy. No tuberculosis or other respiratory infection. They prescribe allergy tablets and an inhaler, both of which I use dutifully to prevent the cough and protect this body. My body. The doctor suggested the cough may be psychosomatic, and so, now I speak to a therapist every week. Her name is Kiko. She has kind eyes. I like her, despite only having had three sessions. She allows for me to be quiet. She says, talking isn't always so important. Not all feelings have words. I wish, though, that I could tell her. Tell anyone. But it's too much to say what hurts. What haunts. She encourages me to continue journaling, and I try but the words are only records of my day, and never my true feelings. Fear? Somewhat, but mostly, again, the guilt. If I am here, then where is the real Erica Deschaine? What has become of her? I watched Erica like I watch all new tenants in what was once my apartment. Of course, she never saw me. No one ever has, much like a continuance of my neglected life, the one I rightfully lived. Erica had a light about her, a stronger aura than I have ever seen in all my days and nights as a dead person. And she was good, that Erica Deschain, trust me. I know fourteen-year-olds. I had two of my own. Where did I go wrong with those boys? Perhaps it was the sickness, my absence. Who can know? All I am certain of is that I felt like Erica could be my daughter. I wish I could have been her mother, instead of this cold shadow in the corner. I marveled at her for eight months. She would come home from school and promptly complete her arithmetic. She practiced her flute. She wrote in her journal. She worried about friends, exams, her future, but mostly she worried about her father and his ability to cope with the death of Erica's mother. Some nights, Erica would cry into her pillow, then sleep fitfully after yelling, Mama! Mama! The brightness of her aura so golden white, I imagined it would feel burning hot, if I could feel it all. One night, the longing to sense that light overcame me, and I crept into her bed gently. I took my long, skeletal, unseen arms, and I grasped her tightly. I held her, a lost mother cradling a lost child, and slowly, but certainly, I felt warmth seep into my own coldness, light transferring to my darkness, filling me. And for the first time in so many decades, I smiled. I sank into my own sleep. 
But when Erica's alarm began to shudder and buzz, I realized that my heart was thudding loudly against my breast. How had my dead heart begun to beat? Then, I felt a pressing on my bladder. The realization that I inhabited the body of Erica Deschaines came quite quickly after that. In all my years as a ghost, I never had the urge to relieve myself. The first several days, although confusing, were wonderful. I had woken up able to feel the warmth of a blanket, smell the sulfuric aroma of eggs, taste the water, which I always craved, even in death. I could open my eyes to the sun without a blood-caked pillow under my cheek. Then, the guilt set in. If I am here, where is Erica Deschaines? Compassionately, I had hoped it to be a temporal experience. Perhaps a small gift from a distant god I never greeted in death. But, as the days passed, the guilt consumed me. And... The choking cough began. I have done the best I can to be Erica Deschaines, but the fact of the matter remains that I am not Erica Deschaines. I don't understand the nuances of adolescent life in this decade, with its gadgets that translate electrical impulses to pictures on a screen. But I do try, because, well, what if Erica Deschaines comes back? I don't want her to return to a shattered life or an ill-kept body. I write in her journal. I try to learn the flute. But the quietness, the cough, and the guilt. Erica's father knows something is wrong. But how can I tell him that I'm not his Erica Duchesne, I am Mary Bennett. I am an invalid who died choking on air and blood and I never intended on having another moment in a living body. So, I stay up, I sip water, sometimes I cry into a pillow. The guilt is never-ending, for if I am here, is Erica in the shadows? Or has she perhaps passed to a darkness, an unexistence even beyond my own understanding? And if I am here, what is to become of Mary Bennett? Will a second death take me in fifty years, eighty years, when Erica breathes her last? And when it does take me, will I finally walk the golden path of which I learned each Sabbath as a child, the path to peace, where I am comforted by the rod and staff? Will I once again become sentenced to this lonely chamber where I died? Or will it be worse? Oh, I cannot bear the thought. I just wish I knew what has become of Erica Deschaine. Erica's father, dad, my dad, calls out to me once again. I miss her too, he says as he approaches me and clutches my shoulder with his strong hand. I let him comfort me and we share our mourning for those lost into a vastness that is incomprehensible. If he only knew, in our embrace, that he felt the beating heart of a dead Mary Bennett, and not the golden vitality of his treasured Erica Deschaines. Thanks for listening, and at this time, I'd like to give a special shout out to my first two Tier 3 Patreon subscribers, Tech 10 k and Miriam Joyle. Thanks so much for your support. Y'all are so awesome.